Greetings in Jesus' name. Today I'm going to read from Romans chapter 6, commencing from verse 1. And then I'll try to explain a little whatever I can in Jesus' name. Verse first verse said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Paul's letter to the Romans, Christian, um, and general epistle, so it's for us as well. That we have to ask ourselves the question, you know, having been baptized, um, we are dead to sin. And we hope in looking forward to rise in the newness of life. So the question is, uh, shall we continue in sin, all bad habits? Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may abound? God is always graceful to us. But you know, many blessings can be withheld if we continue in sin. And peradventure, if we continue in sin, the situation that we have to ask ourselves the question, are we really born again? In having been baptized, that's what baptism means, buried with Christ, into Christ's death, that means we are dead to sin, yes, and we are rising to be a new man, a new man in God. So we don't want the grace of God to abound from us. We want more grace as we live our life. It says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know how? You know we are dead to sin. Yes, we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been baptized. Yes, so we, we are dead to sin. So how shall we live there? Therein? We have been set free from sin. To live a new life in, in Jesus Christ. So we drop off the old man and his deeds. And now we put in on Christ. We have a new nature to live a spiritual life now. To walk in the way of the Lord, to be Christ-like. He says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. So of course, you know, we, we, we are dead to sin, yes, and we rise with Christ, remember how Christ rise victoriously, yes, from the, from the grave, praise the Lord, and we know we have been raised to walk in the newness of life. You know, no more cheating, no more lying, no more backbiting, envy, strife, jealousy, all these things we decided to drop off because we are a new man in Christ. The one that St. Paul said, don't tell me what I was, but tell me what I am. I am at this present moment. I am what I am in Jesus Christ. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Yes, the old man is, before we accepted the Lord, we walk with the old man of sin, 
Yeah, we do a lot of wrong things. Uh, we decided uh, now we, we want to we want to change and to be in Christ. So we decided now that the old man will be crucified with Christ, Christ who died in our place for our sins and our iniquity. Yes, so that old man should be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Yes, Praise yeah. because once we were serf a servant to sin, but now we, we've been set free from being a servant of sin. We are set free to live in Christ. Verse 7, for, that, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Yes, so we've been raised to to be to, to live in Christ, we should also live in Him. Put on Christ in the fullness. Yes, that people can see that there's that change in us. We are no more walking after the flesh, after the way of Satan, but our example is in Christ, Jesus Christ. And we are called to be examples. That's why Jesus said, we are the light of the world. Yes? So, there should be changes. If there's no changes, we, we are to go back to God. You know, the Lord said we can come and reason with Him. He said, those sins be as red as crimson, He can make them as white as snow. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, we can always humble go to God confess our faults to him and ask him for to aid us because you know we may not have long, much strength but we know God is able to give us ability and what it takes. Verse 9 Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Yes, so Jesus died once. Yes, so we, we've been dead to sin once, and we're supposed to raise in that newness, in that Christ like manner now. Yes, we're living for God now. Yes, that's why the songwriter said, I am not my own. I belong to Jesus. I have a new master. I used to serve Satan, but now I have a new master and Lord. That's Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's my master. He's my Lord. So as, as subjects, we servants of God, we serve in God. So if God tells us to do something, um, we take heed. Like Jesus said, for example, his commandment before he leave us in this world, he said that we must love one another even as he loved them. Praise the Lord. And you know, love it covers a multitude of sin, the Bible tells us. Verse 11, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. You know, so the one that Jesus told his disciple, if we would come after him, we must deny ourselves. The world forsake, we have to turn our back and sin. Take up the cross and come after him. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we find that we we come in short, we need to go back to God and pray and reason it out with God, and because God have the, uh, the the remedy to suit every need. Verse thirteen: Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness 
unto God. So it tells us to yield our members to God. For example, you know, our tongue. You know, sometimes we could sin with our tongue, saying a lot of things. Yes, um, but the Bible said every idle word we speak, we have to give account for it. So, in uh, in, in in other words, don't get mixed up in in sin, in the folly of sin. Sometimes we we spread false rumors. Uh, sometimes we we try to deceive. Yes, and sometimes we, we even lie with our tongue. So all that we in, instead, he said, we must yield our members, yield our tongue for God. He testify of the love of God. He you know, tell us uh, others of the goodness of God, and let our tongue be used to bless, not to curse, not to condemn. Yes, but our tongue in righteousness. Verse 40, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You know, it says we are not under the law. With the law, we know it was given to Moses for the children of Israel. And the law is good, and the law is righteous. But no one was able to keep the, the law, the, the whole law. Praise the Lord. But Jesus came and he fulfilled. He kept the whole law, not one sin. Yes? Praise the Lord. So we give God praise so that we are not under the law because, you know, we, we sin in so many ways. Yeah? If, if we don't steal and we don't lie and we don't covet, it could possibly we sin in certain areas, in, even in our thoughts, and so on. So it's difficult was to keep the whole law, but we know Jesus was perfect, and so on. But now we're under grace. In other words, grace is unmerited favor from God. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve um, blessing from God. But Jesus took it upon himself to come and to die in my place for my sins, my past sins, my present sins, my future sins. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world that we can have everlasting life. So we are living now under the grace of God, the goodness of God. Not that we should take it, take it as an excuse to sin because really the Bible tells me that my spirit bears witness with the Spirit of God, that we are children of God. In other words, I should now be bringing forth good fruits, not bad fruits. In the example, for example, live a life of holiness and righteousness and truthfulness, yes, and so on. Yeah, so because sin doesn't have dominion over us, we're not under the law, but thank God. You know, for example, when we go to heaven, yes, and uh, supposing we look back, we can never say it's because I've kept the law. It's, it's not because I didn't have fault, but it's because of the goodness of God, the grace of God. Salvation is, we know, is a thing that money cannot buy, but it is free without money and without price. All we have to do is to commit ourselves to God. We say, God, come in. Accept me as I am. Forgive me. Lord, I confess. Change me and make your, your abode in my heart. And so on. And you know, just a simple prayer in coming to God. God, accept. Because that's God's desire, that's God's will in the first place, that all should come unto him. Yes? So he wants us to come just as we are. Doesn't matter what a sinner we were, but he is willing to accept us and to wash us and to change us and to make us what he wants us to be. So verse 15 said, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? But under grace, God forbid. That's what I said previously. We not 
that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. So, so we thank God we we no more servants of sin, we no more servants of Satan to do the works of Satan, but we we've been washed in the blood of Jesus, and now we yield ourselves servants to of God. Yes, and now we're going to be obedient to what God is telling me to do, or how God is telling me to live. Yes, praise the Lord. Because if we if we sin, praise the Lord, and we don't confess and don't change, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, that's the grace of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Verse 17, But God be thanked that he were the servants of sin, but he have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, which was delivered you. So we obey from the heart. In other words, when we come to God, we have to come clean, honest with God, because, you know, it's no point we come halfway. It, it better we talk everything over to God, because God is a spirit. And the Bible tells me they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, God knows what is our intention. He knows what is the end before the beginning. So no way we could get around God. So we have to obey from the heart. Yeah, we may be weak in some in some areas. Yes, but at the same time, our focus is in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Word of God that is important. The Word of God should be abiding in our heart. That's why it's good when we can, can hear the Word of God that is being preached. You know, if we are in a church and, and we're not preaching the Word of God and, and all we're doing, talking and, and going down the road of contrary, nobody understands, nobody knows. But when you, we go over the word, I believe the Holy Spirit will convict victors of the word and help us to overcome by faith. So verse 17 again, But God be thank that he was the servant of sin, but he have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered. Yes, we heard the word. And we've been convicted, and now we're going to not stay there. We're going to live by the word. We're going to seek to understand and to know the will of God, that we should have the word of God in our heart, that we, we know we shouldn't go do the wrong things, uh, but we should live an upright life. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, he became the servants of righteousness. Speak after I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yield your members servants to uncleanness, that before we accept Christ, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Bless the Lord. For when he wore the servants of sin, he was free from righteousness. But what fruit had he then in those things whereof he are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Yes? So, you know, when we look back in our life many times and we see, we come to understand certain wrongs that we did and certain, you know, it's embarrassing. And, uh, you know, we, f we feel it sometimes. But we thank God. God is gracious and merciful and forgiving. So we confess it all. Yes. And we, we live in a new life. We can say, I am of Christ now. We live in a life of righteousness. Amen. But now, verse 22, But now being made free from sin, 
and became servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end, it, 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 it everlasting life. In other words, what is saying, we should be living a holy life. Yes, you know, there are times we, we must forget the body of Christ, you know, go to church, you know, and, and uh, that we could learn, praise God, and we can be, set ourselves in a position where God can even use us. Yes, because the process begins, you know, from the time we baptize, we live in a new life, uh, we take the yoke of Jesus and we learn of him, and the Holy Spirit is is bringing us from being a babe in Christ, bringing us into maturity, maturity. yes, and we come into a position where God can say, use, use you and use me, you know, to bless somebody, yes? So, and the important thing to remember, we always think the end, everlasting life. In other words, when we die today, or tomorrow, or whenever we die, we know we go, we leave this world, but we go on to everlasting life. And with all the problems we're going through, you know, it will be no more. But how blessed it is. The one that St. Paul said, I have not seen, neither has a heard, and neither has it entered into man's understanding what God had in store for them that loved him. So it's much more than what we can ever imagine that God have in store. Imagine a life of eternity where we don't have to say, suffer from the cold or the hot sun. You know, we don't have to suffer in any wise, if, if, any need, but we live in, in eternity with God. Bless God. Uh, verse 23 said, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, so we have a blessing, a wonderful blessing that we cannot even explain, but, it's, but we know that it's something much more than we can ever explain or think about. Yes, it said, for the wages of sin, if we live in sin and we don't confess and we don't make it our peace with God, you know, then we'll have eternal death. Yes, we know when we die in this world, we, the body died. But what about the spirit, the soul? It lives on, whether in heaven or in hell. Yes, if it's in hell, it's eternal death awaits us. But if, it's, if, if we accept the gift of God, which is eternal life, believe on the Lord Jesus, take him at his word, yes, is we, then we have eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank God for his gracious word. And may the good Lord continue to bless, bless us as we study the word of God, as we talk about the word of God, and as we listen to the word of God, we ask in God to, to let the word abide in our heart. In Jesus' name, thank you.